Hello and welcome back to another episode on the Stripe Developers YouTube channel here. Today we've got a really exciting uh, session for you. We're going to be building some SaaS tools, but we're going to use no code today. So uh, welcome back again. I'm CJ from the Stripe uh, Developer Advocacy Team, and I'm joined by Ben from Stripe and TJ from Bubble, the, uh, the resident experts, experts in uh, both no code and SaaS. And so we've got a really exciting uh, set of demos today for you. So uh, maybe we could start with a round of introductions. TJ, do you mind going first? Tell us kind of like, yeah, um, a little bit about yourself. And then um, maybe Ben, yeah, if you can go second. Cool. Yeah. So hello. My name is TJ Andrews. I'm a software engineer at Bubble. Primarily, I focus on the user experience of our visual editor, as well as the onboarding, education, and payment flows, which includes our Stripe integration. And uh, yeah, Ben. Yeah, I'm Ben. I'm uh, one of the engineers on the billing team, and I'm currently uh, involved a lot in a lot of Stripe's no-code efforts. So I'm excited to be here and kind of show off what, what we've got going on. Awesome, awesome. Uh, I know, Ben, you've done a ton of stuff with Bubble before. You've done demos with Bubble. Uh, and now that you're, you're at Stripe, I think, um, yeah, you and TJ combined, we're going to see some really cool stuff today. So why don't we go through first, if TJ, do you mind kind of just showing us some, yeah, some tips and tricks for how we might work with Bubble, and then we'll get into the Stripe stuff in the second half here. Cool. Sounds great. So first, uh, for folks that aren't familiar with Bubble, Bubble is a visual programming framework that lets people build and deploy custom web apps. So we've got a powerful points and click web editor, built-in database, and cloud hosting platform that allows you to design interfaces, build workflows, and create complex marketplaces, SaaS products, and more. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna give a high level intro of how Bubble's basic interface works, um, and then deep dive a little bit more into our plugin system so that it can set up Ben for what he's gonna show uh, in a little bit. So first um, over here on the left is the tabs. So there's seven tabs uh, to help build your app. So starting with the design tab, this is for defining your app's visual appearance. Uh, workflows are for defining user interaction. Data for managing data your users create styles for creating reusable designs, plugins for adding extended functionality, settings to define app-wide controls and connect to external services with one click, and logs to monitor apps usage and activity. So now let's walk through plugins. Um, the, the main plugins I wanna show off uh, or demonstrate today are the Stripe plugin and the API connector plugin, which is what Ben will be using later for showing how to work with Stripe customer portal. Uh, but yeah, so you go to the plugins tab, you click add plugins. Uh, over here on the left, there's filters you can use. Um, and also we have free and premium plugins. So what I'm going to show today are both free and built by Bubble. We have third party developers or Bubble, um, or you can just search. So if I type Stripe, we can install that real quick. And then API, oh, the API connector, I get that one. Cool. So first we'll start with the API connector. So this is a special plugin built by Bubble that lets you connect to any service that exposes a JSON-based RESTful web API. We can use it to fetch data from an external service or post data to trigger some actions. Um, so I'll, I'll do a quick example with uh, a, a basic API that, that I built um, outside of this app. So first I just click add, another, an, ex, uh, add an API. Uh, we'll call this fun facts because this is really just gonna grab some facts from this API and then we can display it to our users. Um, so first we need to define a call. So the call can just be get facts. In here we can say like what kind of um, HTTP method we wanna use. In here we're just gonna use a get, but we could we could use others of course. Um, so this is the uh, the RESTful endpoint that I've created. We can, we can call this from the browser. So I'll, I'll check that box. And you have to initialize the call before it can work, which is basically mapping this data to Bubble. So we can use it inside of our Bubble app. In here, we see like what kind of things come back from this API. So if we wanted to not use some of this, like I don't care about the created dates or the created by, we can ignore the fields. What I really care about is this fact here, which is the text. So I'll just save this. Um, yeah, let me just show you real quick how to use it in the design tab. So go into here, uh, create a text, we'll call this uh, uh, fun fact, and we'll be getting dynamic data from this. So we just click dynamic uh, data, get data from an external API. And this is an API we created. And now what we want is the response, which is actually a list. So from a list, we can do a lot of things. We could get the first item, the last item, but I think we want a random item here. 
and we want the fact, which is going to be text. So now it's basically saying we'll have fun facts and then some text afterwards. And we can style this, uh, make it a little bit bolder. So let's let's just make it dark. Um, now we can preview it and let's just see what it does. So now this is live on the web, and you know if you go to this URL, there's, there's this is debug mode here, which has this down here, but you don't have to use that. Uh, fun fact: an ostrich's eye is bigger than his brain. If I refresh the page, it should get another random uh, fun fact, and to prove like what it's actually doing, um, almonds are a member of the peach family. So if we look at the network traffic, it's actually going to this facts API, grabbing the response. There's seven of them, and getting a random one. So. Uh, yeah, that's that's kind of a high level overview of how we use the API connector. Um, we, it, it's much more powerful than that contrived example, but I think that kind of gives you an example of like what you can do with the API connector. For Stripe, uh, we actually have built sort of this in-house app that we use for our plugin that can do tons of different actions. So if I go to the plugins tab, look at Stripe here, you'll notice that there's a, we list out some of the content you can do with the Stripe plugin. So there's data calls that we use to, to just grab some data from Stripe. And then there's actions we use, such as subscribing the user to a plan or paying an invoice. And those are actions we can use on Stripe. So what I'll do with this app is just demonstrate sort of the, the app running. And then I'll give you a little behind the scenes of what's going on in Bubbles to, to make it work. So if I just hit preview on this app, uh, let me log out. I'll create a new user here. Log in, uh, TJ test bubble.io, sign up for the app. Cool. So here's my user. Um, monthly recurring charges and one time charges are zeroed out. We'll look at that in a little bit. Um, but here's some of the things we can do and add cards, create coupons. I'll demonstrate subscribing to a plan. So hit the subscribe button. This brings up the Stripe checkout screen. So let me add some details in here. And this plan was already set up on Stripe. Uh, so that's that's what we're seeing on the left here. So hit subscribe. Cool. So successfully entered and I'm subscribed to a plan. Let me refresh this real quick. Hopefully, yeah, so my MRR is now $49. Um, and one-time charges is still $0. So let me purchase a product as an example. So if I were to buy this $25 item, it I had already saved my credit card information. So I'll just leave that, hit pay. <clears throat> cool, so we were charged uh, and my one-time charges is now $25. And yeah, so we have this invoice showing up here. That's part of the API. And yeah, let me show you from the, the, uh, the bubble side sort of what's going on. So the easiest way to see what happens from a button click is to just go to the button and see what's going on in the workflow. So I'll just hit this start slash edit workflow. So what this is saying is when the subscribe button is clicked, it's going to, to run this action first, so step one subscribe the user to a price. So this is uh, this is an action from the Stripe plugin. So when you install it, you'll have access to this action. The plan names are, you know, come from the Stripe integration that we have set up with this, uh, with this account. And that's the $49 plan. And then after this comes back, it'll go to step two, which create a new revenue. I'll, I'll describe that in a little bit, but what's happening is it's creating uh, this data type called revenue a new row, essentially a new record in our data um, where the MRR is 49 and the user is the current user. So if I wanna see what that means, I go into the data tab. In the data tab, we have different data types. User is created for every bubble app, but revenue here is something that I created um, you know, before this. And if we wanted to create a new data type, it's really, really easy. Uh, we can create anything here and just hit create. Or we can add a new field, like if we wanted to say refund amount, for example, like if we were tracking refunds, we could add a new field, make it a number, create it, and now we have a refund amount. Um, you can also view the data. So this is what it looks like you know, from a tabular standpoint. So one row could be MRR, another one could be one-time charges. 
Um, so if we go back to the workflow, that's all this is doing. It's creating a new revenue and entering it in the database. Um, and similar with purchase, uh, it's charging the current user, which is a different action, creating a new revenue. This one, actually the results of the first step we can use, uh, which turns into an order and the amount received, including coupons, which is a number. And we divide by 100 because it's sense based uh, from Stripe. So um, yeah, that, and that's creating a record for revenue. And then it's just to use it in the app up here, this is where the, like the magic number comes in. We're searching for the revenues. So user is current user, which will give us uh, a list. And we want each item's MRR in this case, which evaluates to a list of numbers. And then you can run functions on those numbers. So I chose some. You could do like average or median or other functions on a list to get the number. But yeah, so that's just the sum, the total MRR. And similar for one-time charges, except this is each item's one-time charge. So very easily can display uh, a bunch of data uh, in, a, in this visual way. Um, yeah, I think that's mostly what I wanted to show from a bubble plugin standpoint. Um, and yeah, I'd like to hand it off to Ben to go deeper into to the demo. Yeah, so uh, hello, hello. Uh, thank you for that, uh, TJ. Uh, so I Basically, what we're going to be going through is uh, how to build out a, a pretty comprehensive Stripe integration with Bubble, uh, just like from a basic SaaS app perspective. So we're going to pretend like we're building an application. We want our users to sign up. We want them to pick a plan, and then we want them to be able to upgrade or downgrade that plan. So from from that point of view, I think uh, the first thing we're going to want to be doing in our Bubble application Right, is we is essentially we want to create those pages. We want to set it up in Stripe, and we're going to be using a really cool feature today called the uh, pricing table, which is coming out uh, later today. It should be going uh, live for all all Stripe or all Stripe merchants. So uh, we're really excited about that. Uh, so just to start off, uh, we're just going to go into our Bubble database, and we're going to add some of these Stripe fields. So we're going to create a customer ID. Uh, we're going to be creating a subscription ID. And these are gonna be just using the, used to track some of the different uh, Stripe fields uh, on, the, on the user here. So we're gonna create price ID. This will track what tier you're on. Um, once we have that, we're just gonna create a couple basic pages in our, in our bubble app. So uh, we're gonna just drag in here um, a signup form. Uh, we're gonna create another page for uh, the pricing table. So we'll call it plan picker. Uh, we're gonna create another page called dashboard, which will have some basic information. And uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and drag a couple of uh, things into here using the, using the bubble editor. So we're gonna drag in a couple text fields. So this one we can just say email and then plug in the use the logged in user's email so we know who's logged in. We can do that for a couple other fields. So we want to know like your customer ID. And we can, uh, that. And then finally we can plug in their price ID. So when a user who's logged in goes to this page, they should see this information. Um, and then last but not least, we want to create a nice button for them to manage their subscription. And we'll hook all this up to workflows uh, soon, but I'm just setting up the, the groundwork here. Uh, next thing we're going to want to do is actually start creating some things in, in uh, Stripe. So if you, go to, if you go to your Stripe account, I have here already pre-populated a, a basically a two-tier application. So you have a basic tier and a premium tier. Uh, you can kind of click in here to see it's $25 a month versus $100 a month. And what we're going to do is create a pricing table for these. So you go to pricing tables, create pricing tables. And if you don't see this in your Stripe account yet, uh, it should show up later today because it's this is like a brand new feature going out uh, today. So it's very exciting. So we're just going to add uh, the basic tier and we're going to add in the premium tier. So this will be a pricing table that you can just plug into any website or application, and it will uh, let you check out from here. So we're going to click Continue here. And uh, let's see things. And you can see kind of the pricing table, the payment page that they end up going to when they click one of the tiers. 
And then finally the, the confirmation page. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna redirect them back after they go, go to their con, um, go to, uh, check out. So we're gonna go ahead and copy our URL for the bubble app and then we're gonna send them to the dashboard. So we're gonna just say slash dashboard there for both of, both of these. And then we're going to click finish and it'll spit out uh, some HTML for us to copy. So we have this. So I'm just going to grab all this code here and uh, we're going to plug it into that plan picker page that uh, and then so for this specific component, we're just going to drag in an HTML component because we have uh, this raw script here and we're going to add one uh, one extra thing to this, which is the client reference ID. And this is gonna be used later in one of our workflows to uh, pick out who, the specific session. So we're just gonna go ahead and plug in the unique identifier for that user. And then we're just gonna make this big so we can fit the whole thing. And now we're just gonna preview this page to see if, if it works. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and start from the index page. And actually, we'll, while we're here, we might as well set it up so when you sign up, it sends you to this plan picker. So uh, we open up our workflows here and because I dragged in this component, we have a bunch of uh, sign up and login workflows. So here's the one that happens when you sign up. We're gonna have the second step to be going to the plan picker we just created. So, we have that. Now let's go ahead and preview this. We're going to go ahead and sign up. And it should take us to the plan picker. Now it's loading the uh, pricing table. Okay, we're going to go ahead and pick uh, basic. And go four two four two. And then when it's done, it should redirect me back to our dashboard page. Now it's not going to tell me any of the information about Stripe yet. Uh, we still have to set up the workflows that uh, pull out the uh, information post checkout and loads it into the database. So right now you see. Um, it knows who I am, but it doesn't know uh, my Stripe customer ID or my Stripe price ID. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and get that part working now. So in order to do that, we're gonna be using uh, something called uh, Stripe webhooks um, with Bubble backend workflows. So uh, Bubble has this thing called backend workflows. And in order to get it turned on, you go to your settings, you go to, uh, which one was it? API. And then there's this checkbox here that says enable workflow API and backend workflows. This essentially lets you define uh, APIs that other applications can call within Bubble. And in this case, we're gonna say uh, Stripe's webhooks are gonna call this backend API. And uh, when certain events happen, like for example, that you've created your subscription or you've changed your plan, we wanna trigger certain actions to happen in the Bubble database. So we're gonna go to this new section called backend workflows here. And we're going to create. Let's just create one called subscribe. So this will. This is what we want to have triggered uh, when someone subscribes. We're just going to check these boxes now. Um, in order to define what kind of uh, payload we're dealing with, we go to this thing called detect uh, request data, and then click detect data. This gives us a URL that when we send a payload to it, Bubble will pick up that payload and then turn it into Bubble's data model, so you can pull different information out in your workflow. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and trigger, um, we're going to go ahead and create a webhook for this. So we go to developers and then click webhooks and then create a new endpoint. And uh, I think we have one already. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this one real quick so we can create another one just for this example. So I'm just going to paste in my uh, URL here for subscribed. Uh, this gets called on subscription creation. And what we're actually gonna be listening to is the uh, checkout complete 
So when a checkout session has been completed, there is another alternative where you can do a subscription created. But in this case, we um, we want to be able to get the actual customer who uh, created it because we don't know who they are yet. So we're going to be using checkout session completed. This should have all the information we need. Um, so we're just going to click add event here. And then all we need to do now is uh, trigger this event. So what I'm going to do is just go through this one more time. I'm going to go uh, back to this plan picker page. I'm going to check out one more time and then it should send um, a webhook to, to this specific page and we should be able to then make our workflow. So that's the four two four two one more time. Okay, and now you can see here, it actually got that payload. So uh, we have all the different fields that we can deal with here. And uh, I should actually see in here the, the important part, which is this client reference ID. If you remember, I set that in that uh, HTML. It has the ID of the uh, unique identifier of that bubble user. So we can pull that out to know who's actually performing the checkout. So we're just gonna go ahead and save this. And uh, what we're gonna wanna do on subscribe is actually update the logged in user. So we're gonna wanna make changes to a thing on subscribe. The thing to change is something we need to search for because we don't know who the current user is at this point. We're gonna search for users who have their unique identifier equal to something in the request data, which is that client reference ID. So once to make sure that those are equal, uh, we wanna pick the first item because we are only expecting a single item out of the search. Um, sometimes when you're searching for things in bubble, you can get a list of things and you need to kind of figure out which one you're trying to get. But in this case, we just need the first one and that'll get that. So then we just want to start adding in um, the things we, we actually do have, which are one, the customer ID. So in the, in here we have the customer and we have the subscription ID. Uh, which is this. Now, one thing we don't have yet is the uh, price ID. Now, th this is because the checkout session doesn't have that data. It only has a subscription ID. So we'll need to make a get call uh, on the subscription and then set the price to that. Now, wh what does that mean exactly? So we have here um, a, a, the API call to get a subscription. Uh, this is just the Stripe API, right? So uh, in here we have uh, you can you have the price ID that we're trying to get. And in order to do that, we're going to use the, something that uh, TJ showed us earlier, which is the API connector. Uh, now, so if we go to, I have already set these up, so I'll, I'll just kind of show how it works. So we have here um, uh, the get subscription API. So we, I've defined here my, in my key values, kind of the, the my secret key, uh, please don't steal my test mode account. <laughs> Uh, so we have here uh, a get request to get a specific ID, and then uh, we can make that call um, in there. I've also set up another one to create a portal session, which we'll get into in a second here. But uh, so let me just go, should kind of show you how to actually use this get request. So go make a, a step two here, and then on plugins, we have get subscription. And then all it asks for is the ID of the subscription. So you just say result of step one, or we can just pull it out of the request data actually. So we can just pull the subscription out of there. And then this should uh, get, this step will now return a subscription. And then the last thing we wanna do is one more time, make changes to that uh, step one user, or yeah, make changes to that same user we did in step one. And this time we wanna actually set the price ID. So we're gonna pull the result of our step two. I know it gets, this is kind of how you do it in bubble. Uh, we wanna get the, the plan ID. So um, th this is essentially what we're gonna do to get all the fields set in our database. So now, um, hopefully when I test this, everything should work. I need to do one more thing before I actually run a test and that is update my webhook and be, and the the purpose of that is uh, I need to delete this back that says slash initialize because we've already initialized our webhook and then we we don't need that slash initialize anymore. So I'm going to delete it. Uh, we're going to go in here 
And now I'm just going to go ahead and do an end-to-end -end test here. So we're going to uh, go back to back, back, back to the plan picker. And now this time, now let me just remember what my email was. Uh, then test track. Okay. Now when I subscribe, it should go through and call that workflow. All right, let's see if this works. Okay, so as you can see, everything worked flawlessly, right? We have our price ID, we have our customer ID, and I did forgot to put the subscription ID, but if I uh, reload our database, you can see that's filled out as well. Uh, now that we've gotten that working, uh, the next step is to let the end user actually manage their subscription. So to do that, we're going to be using something called the Stripe uh, Customer Portal. And uh, essentially, that's a, a page that you can redirect your user to and it lets them manage their subscription, change their plan, do a cancellation, all kinds of very useful things that you, otherwise you would have to build yourself. And this kind of solves a lot of that pain. Uh, so we're going to be turning this button into that. Uh, so what we're going to do is just going to be quite straightforward. We're going to go to the uh, dashboard page, we're going to click this button and we're going to create a workflow that gets triggered when you click the button. So if we click start workflow, we click here, and then what we're going to want to do is make an API call to that. Uh, if you remember, I showed you that create portal session API defined. And it, um, essentially this just takes in the customer ID and that's something we did store on the user. So this time we can use current user because we, we know who's logged in we can pull out their customer ID and the return URL, we want them to go right back to this dashboard. So I'm just gonna copy this URL and then paste it here. And then uh, theoretically that should work. Once I, last but not least, I have to redirect them. So I'm gonna click open an external website and then we're just gonna pull uh, right out of that step, the, uh, where is it, URL. So that URL will be a Stripe portal session. And now when we, click preview here, we should be able to get this all working. So now when I click this button, it's gonna make an API call to Stripe, create a portal session, redirect us here, and boom, we've got essentially everything we need. Uh, so here we have you know, our basic plan, $25 a month. We can click update, and then we have see the premium plan. I can, I can upgrade right here. Uh, it'll prorate the $25 I've already paid. So we have only paid $75 to upgrade. Click upgrade. And uh, it'll, we can then uh, you know, go back and uh, click this go back button and it'll take us right back to the dashboard. Now, uh, this is not gonna be reflected in our application yet though. We still have the, this price ID is the old price ID, the $25 plan price ID. What we wanna do is make it so Bubble is aware that the end customer just changed their plan. And for that, we're gonna create one more webhook. Uh, so, one more, so the, the webhook we're gonna create here is another backend workflow. And uh, we're going to create a new one. We're gonna call it change plan. And we're gonna do the same thing we did before, which is detect a data request. And uh, copy this link. Um, what did I say here? Yeah, yeah. So I'm just gonna create a new endpoint. I'm just, just gonna initialize it. And then this time the event we want is a subscription event. So subscription.updated. This one gets called whenever you have any change to your subscription. Uh, so this is what we want. We're gonna add it. And now we're just gonna go ahead and uh, do the same thing we did before, which is make the change to our subscription. Oh, let me. Uh, yeah, I know, I made a change. Okay, I'm gonna click this to create another portal session, redirect to it, and we're gonna up, we're gonna change our plan again, back to basic. You can see we're, char we're charged zero because we've already paid for it. And here's our payload. So we have all the information we need, including the, um, the plan that they changed to, right? So here's the plan ID that they changed to right here. 
which is what we're going to want to pull out and uh, change in the database. So we're going to save this. And then one more time, we're going to need to do a search. So let's see, search, search, search. Make, oh, make change to a thing, make a change to a user. So we're going to search for a user where their uh, customer ID is equal to the subscriptions customer. I should have just done, well, I could have either searched for the subscription ID here or the customer ID, but uh, it doesn't really matter. Again, we're going to pull the first item out of that search, and we're going to change one field, which is the price ID. The other fields stay the same. And then we're going to pull the plan ID, which is a price. And then that should theoretically handle um, all, the, the, all of that case. So I'm just going to delete this extra one I accidentally created. Uh, bu, bu, bu. Okay, I think I think we're good to test this. I just need to do the final thing one more time, which is, of course, get rid of this slash initialize at the end. Click update. Okay, now let's uh, test one more time. If I go to this dashboard page, preview it. Now we're going to, so this, this is still the $25 price. We're expecting it to change from this LFA at the end to something else. Um, so we're just going to click update here, update plan, update here. And if everything worked correctly, when we go back to our application, uh, we should be able to see, yeah, MQF, that is not the same one. So it did register the change and the use of this is, right, uh, you can have part of your application uh, gated until the, the price has updated to the premium plan, right? So you have your basic features. Um, I know it doesn't look like much, it's just text right now, but like, just imagine uh, we had a check saying, oh, if you're on this price, show this. If you're on this other price, show that. You can plug in your upsell flows, all kinds of useful things um, using all what we've done uh, on this demo today. Um, and obviously there's a lot of things I haven't covered. Um, like for example, cancellations, which is also a function of this customer portal, right? We can plug in uh, handling cancellations. We could have a, a, a status field on your customer object uh, where you can track if they're active, trialing, canceled, past due, and have certain actions happen based on those um, using the, the, the foundations we went over um, on this uh, live stream. Um, but to, honestly, that's all I really have to show. Does anybody have any uh, any questions? So I, I have a question. If we could, um, I think two things come to mind. Number one, like if if you're trying to set up these webhooks and these workflows and it's not working, where might you go to debug that? And then number two, uh, if you're using, um, I think it's like user level permissions. TJ can hopefully jump in here and uh, add a little bit of color here. There's uh, there's like a permission setting too that um, may trip folks up. So yeah, I would love to kind of just talk about both of those things. Yeah, yeah. So the, the place you want to go to um, when you're having any issues is the logs. Um, so the logs are pretty useful here. So you click server logs and then you can uh, see if we have, you can just click search like two minutes ago. This is a, this search box is amazing, by the way. You can type in like anything like five days ago. It takes human readable text and uh, does it. I, I, this is like one of my favorite uh, like time picker things because you just type in the text and it figures it out for you. Um, but anyway, so you, you, you basically pull up the logs and then you can actually see it going through your workflow. So you can see it started running the change plan workflow. That means it got the payload. It pulled the thing I wanted to change, which is the current user. So it was able to find that. I've had it happen where um, my, my search criteria was wrong. So um, it, this showed as blank and that's how I knew, oh, I need to go back and look and fix my search criteria. Um, obviously it was able to pull the price out of the payload and then it changed it. Um, you can see here where it actually created the, the portal session using that API. Uh, this was another step earlier where you click the button, it creates the portal session. So you, th these logs are really useful for tracking uh, your workflow runs. And as you said before, um, I think uh, CJ, uh, there, there are some things that can trip you up that trip me up specifically. One is uh, I think if you're dealing with users, um, if you users specifically, there's a lot of uh, privacy security settings um, around that. Uh, where are the, maybe yeah, TJ, yeah. you can jump yeah. in. 
in the data tab, if you click that. <clears throat> uh, data, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then under privacy. Yeah, so by default, we don't want to uh, expose all of users' data to everybody. Um, so whenever you're getting the data from a backend workflow, you don't have a logged in user, uh, you want to make sure that the privacy settings are correct or you can ignore them on the, on the workflow itself. So yeah, this is a this can definitely trip people up. Cool. Yeah. We've, we've also got a couple other questions here. Uh, there was a question about D3, I think, D3.js, and if there's uh, things built into Bubble that allow you to do maybe some like complex charting. Um, and then yeah. we've also got questions about Connect and some other best practices. But TJ, yeah, is there any color that you could add around, uh, yeah, like charting plugins or things you can do inside of Bubble with charts? Yeah, exactly. So natively, uh, there's there's not any uh, built-in charting, but we did we do have a, a, a built element called chart element uh, uses chart JS, I believe, and then there's a bunch of other um, external plugins. So like chart chart element is the first one you see there, and when you install that onto the app, you you'll see uh, more visual elements on the uh, in the design tab. Um, so then you can add charts, um, and and I'm not sure if somebody actually have a has a plugin for D3, but it can certainly be built on Bubble. So that's the cool thing is. Uh, things can be built as a plugin, uh, uh, you know, as people need them. Super cool. Let's talk about Christian's question here. What about Stripe Connect features? Uh, so I I can speak to the the Stripe side of stuff, and I think Ben can too. Uh, it's totally possible to create the customer portal and the checkout flows with Stripe Connect. TJ, I feel like I've seen somewhere that there was a there was like a Stripe Connect plugin is that maybe that was like a community maintained plugin or is that part of the official stripe plugin uh that's a good question um is stripe connect is where you're reselling you're selling uh, your users are selling on your platform basically yeah it's like yeah. two-sided marketplaces is the traditional yeah. use case yeah if you go to stripe um and the plugins there you'll uh sorry just if you just click on that and some of the data calls uh or the actions are about um, I think that there is one to for seller transfer to seller. Um, everything related to sellers, I think, register the user as a seller. So those right. are things where you can be a marketplace. Um, you know, on top of Bubble. To Very cool. Very cool. So those will yeah. enable those Stripe Connect APIs. Yeah. To create and anything you you can't find in this plugin, you could definitely build using the API connector here. Um, traditionally, with Connect, right, you're you're making API calls on behalf of a merchant who has connected to you. Um, so it would essentially be uh, you'd have to store some sort of information about who you're trying to make an API call for. I think it's it's definitely possible. Um, Yep. That's probably something to to look into in the future for uh, making a plugin TJ. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a fun that'd be a fun addition for sure. Building yeah, building two sided marketplaces. So we're th you're thinking things like Shopify or Lyft, where you're sort of enabling payments on behalf of some other business. Uh, yeah, very 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 cool. We've got another question here. Um, thanks, Christian and Sleep Deprived for your questions. Nick asks, what is the best practice when you're selling both subscriptions and bespoke one time purchases? In particular, where the subscription is like an add-on to the one-time purchase. So, I definitely so there's a couple ways to kind of think about this. Um, it's definitely the, the I think best practice is one if you already have a subscription created for somebody, um, and, and you want to like add on uh, like add add a maybe a one-time invoice or something that's kind of related to that subscription. We have this uh, feature in the API called add invoice items. Basically, you update the subscription, add the invoice item to it for whatever one-time charge you're interested in charging them, and it will kind of show up under the subscription. So it's it's like related to it. Um, obviously, we have for any any sort of regular uh, one-time charges, we have uh, just the invoice API in general, which is great for creating these one-time charges. Um, having a subscription be an add-on to something else. That we're definitely been thinking about um, add-on pricing in general, and uh, I think that's something uh, we we will probably support in the future where we have this complex uh, add-on model, uh, where you where you have like oh you have a subscription and then here's a five dollar add-on or here here's like a, a one-time fee and you can get an add-on subscription for that. Um, it, I think nothing is I supported out of the box for for checkout uh, stripe checkout for for that specific use case where you have the subscription being an optional um, add-on 
Um, but uh, yeah. So if you wanted to, if you wanted the to support maybe a setup fee or like a one-time fee that is at the beginning of a subscription, you can do that by adding um, in addition to like the subscription line item where you're specifying the recurring price, you can also specify a one-time price and that'll show up as like an additional fee when you redirect through the checkout flow the first time. If you're mid cycle, yeah, Ben mentioned the invoices, you can create those uh, directly to collect a one-time payment. This is really common if you have a recurring, uh, recurring subscription business, but you need to bill like a large invoice one time where you're negotiating a contract and you've sort of like set terms with a specific user. And maybe you want to have them pay upfront for three years and sort of lock in a certain deal. Uh, you might do that with invoicing directly through the Stripe dashboard. I also know there's like tons of tools in the bubble plugin for Stripe that allows you to collect one-time payments for a specific customer too. Um, so if you have like these recurring payments, you can always sort of charge the card on file or whatever through the bubble, uh, through the bubble extension. So, yeah, we, we actually use that for bubble itself. So like bubble has a subscription model, um, for the, uh, professional type plans. But then if you were to add a plugin, it's a one-time charge sometimes, sometimes it's recurring, sometimes it's one time. So we actually use the Stripe plugin ourselves to add invoice items to subscriptions that already exist. So, and, it, and it's built into the Stripe plugin. Um, I think it's create an invoice item on, onto a subscription or 12. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. There, it's, there's a lot of different trade-offs too. If you're choosing between making just a one-time charge via a payment intent or via Stripe checkout versus creating an invoice, as Ben's showing here on the screen at the bottom of the customer portal, which is this Stripe hosted page where you don't have to build any of this, um, we have the invoice history. So one of the benefits of going the route of creating an invoice is that you'll have these PDFs that you can link out to and you know, you'll have the, yeah, the full invoice history for that customer, which can be very convenient. Um, so very cool. Uh, there's one, uh, one other question here from sleep deprived. Is there enterprise pricing for, uh, for bubble somewhere? Uh, yes, I, I think we have a pricing page, but I'm not sure if the, um, the, uh, we have, we have plans called dedicated right now, which is like getting onto a dedicated host. And I'm not sure if we um, have exact pricing. So you'd have to contact our uh, sales team to understand like the use cases. Um, but bubble.io slash pricing lets you compare plans and things like that. Super cool. Any, any other questions as we wrap it up here? Um, it looks like maybe there was one more about refunds. So let's see. Oh, uh, we've got, okay, so it came in via the bubble chat. Are we able to automate refunds? Say someone makes a payment, but hasn't completed the workflow to, to like fully sign on, maybe it's 14 days, and then you can automate a refund on day 14. Is that something that we could do with bubble? I'm not, I'm not sure about that one. Do you, do you know, Ben? <laughs> so I, I guess if, if it's something that, that, sends a stripe webhook right like for example like we have like past due or i mean that's not a good one though i i do know bubble has i think scheduled workflows where you, on on a certain thing when a certain thing gets triggered you can schedule like a workflow to get triggered in the future is that, is that am i sounding correct tj on that it's been yeah. a while since i've used them <laughs> yeah i think there is uh time-based workflows that you can create um so, so, so yeah. I would probably look into having one of those trigger 14 days. And then once that gets triggered at the 14 day mark, it would check this, whatever criteria you're interested in looking at. And then if the criteria matches, you refund them. Otherwise you don't refund them. Perfect. Very cool. Ben, TJ, thanks a ton. Really appreciate your demo. Everyone that's watching, thanks so much for your time and attention. And uh, if you want to stick around, uh, stay tuned for future episodes of no code content, SaaS content. We've got a lot of SaaS fundamentals content coming out soon. We're really excited to, to show you how to use the combination of this checkout and the customer portal in a lot of future demos. Uh, if you haven't already, if you're on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, if you want to follow at Stripe Dev on Twitter and follow Bubble on Twitter, and uh, if you want to reach out to Ben or TJ, we will include their uh, Twitter handles down or some way to contact them down in the description. Thanks so much for watching, and we will see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye.